published 1730 Eastern Standard Time, the 23rd of February 2018, updated 1738 Eastern Standard Time, the 23rd of February 2018, Scotland will come out firing at Murrayfield on Saturday but England have reached the point in the development where they are totally in charge of these encounters. We are in for an absolute treat, this is a game England will win well and decisively. If everybody in the party, the coaches, doctors, physios, the 23 players, does the job properly, England will be unstoppable. That's a great feeling. England and Scotland prepare to do battle in the latest Calcutta Cup clash on Saturday England have largely dominated the event and have got the hands on the trophy 71 times there is no hoping for the best or unknowns, just the confidence if you do your job properly the win will come. England have the strongest squad, comparatively few injuries, key players in key positions playing well, Owen Farrell kicking goals and Eddie calling the shots. Scotland are a better team than they have been for some time but that could help England. It's not easy preparing for games where everybody expects an easy win. That's when you get hurt. But a dangerous Scotland helps England focus and gives them that edge. If England execute well, they can't lose this match, because they are better. The only way they lose is if they let themselves down. In the cauldron of a bang Murray field their discipline could desert them and they may be hit by yellow and red cards. They could give away too many penalties, make bad decisions, fluff try chances, panic. There are days when this happens, we've all been there and got the loser t-shirt in Edinburgh. England go into to clash as reigning champions and favourites to win it once again in 2018 England players celebrate with the Calcutta Cup after the victory against Scotland in 2003 play properly though and England win every time and in that respect I've been interested to see Eddie adopt a comparatively low-key approach this week after a fiery lead into the Whaley's game when he came out swinging with his verbals. By contrast, he has been lavishly praising the likes of Finn Russell. This is a reflection of what he felt his team needed against Wales and what he feels they need this week. What won't be lucky, I'm sure, is England's effort up front. They will aim to batter Scotland's pack for the 80 minutes. With the reintroduction of Nathan Hughes at number 8, England are making no concession to the perceived wisdom that you need pace and a fetcher and carrier somewhere in the back row. Scotland will struggle for any decent possession and will be confronted by a daunting defensive team that will just wear them down. Duncan Hodge, left, is congratulated by teammates Gregor Townsend and James McLaren's mindset must be the same as in a World Cup quarterfinal. This is not a November friendly when the quality of performance sometimes seems more important than the result. We read too much, possibly, into Scotland's fine displays against New Zealand and Australia. The Kiwis and Aussies were tired after a long season and they would have played very differently if it had been knockout rugby. If I was Scotland I would be concentrating most of my attention on Farrell. It's a long time since I've seen a player have such an influence and presence in a team. He's at the heart of everything and I do sometimes wonder how England would cope in a high-pressure game if he was missing. Jonathan Joseph scored a hat-trick of tries in the 61-21 demolition of Scotland last year. The quiet build-up will be quickly forgotten when a ferocious, fired-up Murrayfield finds its voice. It will be a seething arena but I'm sure England will see this one out. As a pundit you are expected to make predictions, but Ireland v Wales is too close to call. Ireland are a class team, have made a good start to the tournament and are at home. But they are missing three key players in Robbie Henshaw, Ian Henderson and Teague Furlong, who have made themselves indispensable in recent seasons. Johnny Sexton's back problem is a worry, too. Wales were outstanding against Scotland and very good at Twickenham two weeks ago. Yet lose and the hopes for this year's tournament will be dashed, so the pressure is clearly on both sides in a game that has become quite spicy in recent years. England and Scotland, pictured in 1922, have been playing for the Calcutta Cup since 1879. What strikes me is how different, and stronger, Wales look with the introduction of three players returning from injury and illness in Lee Hapenny, Liam Williams and Dan Biggar. No wonder Warren Gatland has a spring in his step these days. 
Wales are building an impressive squad and, having stated that only England and Ireland are the European nations that could win the 2019 World Cup, I'm beginning to think Wales may feature very prominently as well. As for Saturday afternoon, what odds?